All right, how's it going guys? Tony Maritato here. Welcome to the Medicare Billing Group for PT, OT, and SLPs. I wanna to talk to you today about assignment of benefits. Whether you're gonna accept assignment or not accept assignment, I recently published a video regarding being a PAR participating provider or non-PAR non-participating provider. Now we wanna talk about accept, accepting assignment because this is one of those topics that trips a lot of people up. So let's jump into the screen and we're just gonna start. This is from the Noridium website and this is their description of assignment and non-assignment of benefits. Now, I hate to read to you guys. I know you guys can read, but there are a couple key components in here that I think we just need to get through. So obviously under the Medicare program, there's two reimbursement options. Either you accept assignment or you don't. Um, ex assignment of benefits applies to all participating providers. So if you fill out the CMS 460 and choose to be a participating provider, you must accept assignment. You do not have the option to not accept assignment. Um, if the provider accepts assignment, Medicare will make payment directly to the provider. Under this method, the provider agrees to accept the Medicare approved amount as payment in full. Now, if you saw my last video about being par, non-par, you understand that when they say the approved amount, that is the Medicare allowed amount. If you don't know what that is, you go to look up the CMS physician fee schedule, plug in your specific CPT codes, the one you use most frequently, and look up the allowed amount for your state. Now, there are certain guidelines, whether you're par or non-par, non-par is going to be reimbursed at 95% of the allowed amount, and then you may bill the patient the addition up to the maximum limiting charge. But as a par provider, you're, ex you're accepting the commitment to accept the full allowed amount of the Medicare fee schedule. Medicare pays 80% of the allowed amount, and then either the supplemental Medigap plan or a secondary plan or the patient themselves will pay the remaining 20%. Um, on item 27 on the CMS form, you'll indicate yes or no for accepting assignment. The only person in this scenario who cannot choose to not accept assignment is a non-PAR provider. Okay, you still must be credentialed as non-PAR. Uh, PAR providers cannot choose to not accept assignment. Sorry for the double negatives, guys. Uh, the difference, you know, here. So when accepting assignment, the beneficiary may be billed the 20% coinsurance, which typically is going to go to the secondary, which would be a, a Medigap supplemental plan or maybe another insurance plan. Um, and any unmet deductible for the services not covered by Medicare, the difference between the billed amount and the Medicare approved amount cannot be billed. Some people will call that balance billing, but bottom line, you're allowed to collect up to the Medicare allowed amount. Note the 20% coinsurance based on the 20% Medicare approved amount. I can't stress this part enough. There's a difference between the Medicare approved amount and the maximum allowed amount. Okay, so keep that in mind. Um, some private insurance policies may reimburse the beneficiary for services not covered by Medicare. On assigned claims, the supplier, in this case, we're the supplier, is bound by the assignment agreement. And basically what's happening is you're getting into an agreement with the beneficiary to say you as the provider, par provider or non-par accept, accepting assignment will accept the Medicare approved amount as payment in full. Payment goes to you instead of going to the beneficiary. Um, even if no payment is issued as a result of the payment being applied toward the beneficiary's annual deductible, he, she, she may still accept Medicare's approved amount as payment in full. Let's see what else we have here. Um, possible, it's possible for a supplier to accept assignment on a partially paid bill. 
So like, let's say the, the beneficiary deductible gets met uh, halfway through the claim, right? So you would have to charge and collect from the beneficiary the remainder of that deductible that had not been met, assuming there wasn't a Medigap supplemental or secondary plan paying it. And then you would accept what was reimbursed as payment in full after that, after that remaining balance. Um, if Medicare allowed amount is less than the amount the beneficiary already paid, the supplier must refund the difference to the beneficiary. So again, you can't balance bill, you can't collect or accept any overpayments. If you do collect an overpayment, maybe you misestimate the amount the beneficiary will owe, you must refund that. And there are certain guidelines and time frames that you have to get that money back to the beneficiary. Um, the supplier can collect charges from the beneficiary for services that are denied as not covered by Medicare, even though assignment was accepted. And this is where we get into non-covered services. Either it doesn't meet medical necessity or it's a, a service that Medicare won't reimburse for, like dry needling. Assignment cannot be canceled once the claim has been processed by the carrier and sent a notice of determination to both parties. Okay, so you can't change your mind once you choose it on that claim, on that date of service. This also applies to all future resubmissions, adjustments, appeals, in the case of a denial or underpayment, underpayment um, participating physicians and suppliers may not cancel assignment as this would be a violation of the participation ag agreement. Let's, um, if a supplier consistently violates the assignment agreement, the carrier can imp impose fines and charges. Medicare carrier are carriers are required to report and act on any violations, okay? A supplier is in violation of the assignment agreement if they collect or attempt to collect more than the deduct, goodness gracious, more than the deductible or coinsurance amount or a fee for the paperwork involved in filing a claim. You know, a lot of people try to charge these little extra fees. You just can't do it. If you're par non par, you have to play by the rules. Physician suppliers contracting with billing agents are ultimately responsible for the activities of those agents. And this goes back to, it's not a bad idea to outsource your billing in the right situation, but you have to understand the liability because now it's not just you and your actions. It's the actions of the contracted billing agent that you're responsible for. So please keep that in mind. Um... When assignments accepted, the billing agent should not bill the beneficiary for any amount above the 20% coinsurance or any unmet deductible. Okay, this is where I think it really gets interesting. So non-assignment of benefits, the second reimbursement method, choosing to not accept assignment of benefits under this method, the non-participating provider is the only provider that can file a claim as non-assigned, okay? When the provider does not accept assignment, the Medicare payment will be made directly to the beneficiary. So if you want to receive the money, you have to accept assignment, which means you're going to limit yourself to the Medicare approved amount. The provider may bill the beneficiary no more than the limiting charge for covered services. So I know we've just gone through nine minutes and 20 seconds of information but this is really the juicy part this is the part that you want to pay attention to pull up your chair shut off all the other devices and listen to this part carefully if you choose to be non-par you can accept assignment or not accept assignment if you accept assignment payment will come to you awesome but you're limiting limited to the allowed amount which is the same as the Medicare allowed amount, okay? Not the limiting charge. Now, if you choose to not accept assignment, you're allowed to collect up to the maximum limiting charge, but the Medicare payment is going to the beneficiary. That means you're gonna absorb the cost, the effort, the added headache of collecting payment from the patient. 
Now, you might have an independently wealthy patient. You might have a community of patients, Medicare beneficiaries, who are more than happy to pay you the maximum limiting charge allowed by Medicare. But many of us don't. And the reality is many Medicare beneficiaries are living on a fixed income. They don't have huge disposable incomes that they could just pay a hundred plus dollars per visit whenever they come to see you. So the effort and the, the how do I say it? I, I think that you're setting yourself up for more work on the administrative side, more cost involved in collecting the money from the beneficiary as opposed to just choosing to be a PAR provider, being participating provider, receiving the Medicare payment directly to you, having that information auto forward to the Medigap supplemental plan. Like there are just so many benefits and conveniences that come along with being a participating provider. But that being said, many of you are choosing not to be participating provider. I totally respect your decision. I just want you to understand as a non-PAR provider, if you choose not to accept assignment, you may charge up to that limiting amount. However, the payment has to go to the beneficiary, then the beneficiary has to pay you. If you choose to be PAR, you must accept assignment, you will receive night, what is it? 100% of the allowed amount, which is 5% higher than the non-PAR provider will receive. Um, but the benefit is that payment goes to you directly instead of going to the beneficiary. Guys, I hope this clears up some of the misconceptions that are out there about accepting assignment, not accepting assignment. Go to the source, look at the information for yourself, read the guidelines, try to work it out. Um, because I really do think there's more benefit, more upside to being a participating provider who accepts assignment than trying to go the non-par route to collect a little bit extra, but then have the added headache and hassle of trying to track down those beneficiaries to collect your money. Guys, I hope this was helpful. If it is, let me know in the comments directly on YouTube. YouTube comments are super important to growing the channel and they help me understand what information I need to get to you. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.